My name's Crystal, and my mother was murdered last year. I was always obsessed with the dead, but the obsession got worse once she crossed over. Before she had died, I had already ghost hunted at some of the most haunted locations across the world. But ghost hunting is different for me now. Something's changed. It's personal. So join me and my paranormal diaries as I enter the doorway into the other side. Welcome to my paranormal podcast. Join me now. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It is the Ghost Girl Diaries podcast. This is a paranormal podcast for those of you brave enough to join the circle. Today's podcast, as you can tell behind me, is a little bit more comfortable at home relax because I want it to feel like I'm kind of chatting with you guys one-on-one. I have a lot of updates that I kind of want to go through. I have uh, I have my whole iPad here full of like a bunch of notes so that I didn't forget <clears throat> sort of what I wanted to talk about. Some of you have noticed on my personal social media that I redid the logo for Ghost Girl Diaries and posted it and I'm talking about this new chapter. And I think that um, this chat is long overdue. <clears throat> and this is going to get not super deep, but I do want to talk about sort of what my thought processes have been, you know, since my parents died, I went through, um, that was my iPad that moved by itself. My spirit team's like, Hey, we're here supporting you. Um, I want to talk about my processes as far as, uh, thought processes go. I left, um, my last real, I feel like official ghost girl diaries podcast I was really bitter and angry and and talking about wanting to quit and I'm going to address all of that. And I want to talk about sort of the future and like healing and, um, where I'm going from here and ghost girl diaries, you know, in the future, I really think that I needed a lot of time to think. I think that, um, you know, my mom was killed and then my dad died right after. And I was just like, I was a mess. I was not, I probably shouldn't have done any podcasts up until about like June of this year. Honestly, I probably should have just totally taken a back seat. I had uh, complications with a lot of close friends and family throughout my parents' death because they, a lot of people didn't understand what I was going through mentally, especially with dealing with something like a murder. And that's complicated too, because there's different types of, of death and murder, you know, like I think I would have been able to forgive and release and move on quicker, even if it would have been like a drunk driver that killed my mom, because I could have at least seen it like this person made a terrible mistake. They got behind the wheel and someone else suffered the consequences. However, I think my mom's death was much more brutal in a sense, because this person specifically seeked out my mother, injected her with a lethal injection of medication. Um, It was very malicious and done with purpose. And that took a long time to undo in my head. And I don't want to say I'm healed because I'm not. I don't think you ever heal from something traumatic like that. And especially with my dad, couldn't handle it and died right after. Um, You don't ever heal from something like that. You just learn to mourn and process the old version of yourself. Like my old self died that day with my mom, with my parents, all past versions of me, all past versions of ghost girl diaries. I had to mourn that as a death. I had to mourn that as a rebirth, as that person no longer exists. This new version of me is a completely new person. I had to mourn the past version of my life, the past version of myself in order to actively get here. So a lot of people say, oh, Crystal, you're doing so great. Like you've healed, you healed through. No, I didn't. It's as painful today as it was yesterday. I've just learned through this new sense of self to not walk around crying 24 seven and not want to feel like I want to die on the inside. Um, So I needed a lot of time to think. So if I was trying to unravel and unwrap and heal my parents. Ghost Girl Diaries was going to be put totally on the back burner. And that's exactly what happened. 
where do we go from here? What was I thinking? This is a little uncomplicated or a little complicated. So I want to unwrap it for you guys. I had to really kind of come a long way to learn to decide what my purpose was, what my passion was, and it got misconstrued. In the process of in the process of trying to get the series signed, I changed gears, I shifted gears. The original purpose of getting the series signed was because I have a passion for communicating with the other side and I want to film it. And then when I started getting attacked from producers, production companies, told that I'm a female, I'm not good enough, the, the passion changed, it shifted from the focus, the center focus was originally paranormal. And then now the focus is being a strong female and fighting the patriarchy in paranormal. That was not supposed to be the fight. But it became that because out of frustration and out of hitting so many walls. So the last couple of years I had to sit down and say, okay, you have two fights. Is the fight wanting to, to be involved in paranormal and film paranormal, communicate, communicate with the other side? Or is the fight fighting the patriarchy? Which one is it? Is it about, I mean, it can be both in a sense, it can overlap, but it wasn't, the, the scales were not balanced. It was more about the patriarchy and less about the paranormal. And that was where I lost my passion for the paranormal. And I had to sort of recalibrate myself over the past couple of years and say, wait, we need to get, we need to get these feelings, emotions all straightened out and decide what we, we really want. And I didn't know if I'm being honest, I needed time away to, to be quiet and think and communicate with my spirit team because the lines got blurred. The lines got really blurred. I think I, I started fighting for something that was more of a fight than it really needed to be. And if I don't like the patriarchy, just take them out of the equation, right? Don't go through the production companies. Don't go through the film companies. But I'll talk about why. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the patriarchy is not only the producers, the production companies, the networks but it's also the community. Majority of the paranormal community is men, is male. And <clears throat> I fight them every day. And that was partially why I shifted in back into my cosmetology background because I needed to take the path of least resistance. I needed to take a path where I could still express myself creatively without it constantly being a battle and people come after me. And I also wanted to cultivate and create a new community where I didn't feel like it was one against a million. Because the men are vile in the, in the paranormal community. Not all. I'm not going to say all. But, I mean, there are some that stand out, for sure. And not only fighting your own fan base, who's a patriarchy, who doesn't think there's a place for women, but you're also fighting the professional side, like the producers, production companies, etc., I was like, I can't, I can't, I have to pick and choose my fights. And, and the only fight I had was to heal over my parents. And I wanted to leave the fighting with the patriarchy behind because I was exhausted. Um, I was weak when my parents died. I've been weak for the past couple of years. I didn't really start getting my strength back till about August of this year which was about a year and a half or not longer after my parents died. And I did not have the strength in me to fight the patriarchy. I just didn't. And I have a perfect example of it. You know, and I did this podcast a while ago where I said I was quitting paranormal. And I, in that podcast, I said, I think I'd like to continue the podcast but I'd like to have success similar to Joe Rogan, except on the paranormal aspect, the paranormal side. 
And some guy, a male, of course it was a man, left a comment. And he said this, that I was not to be trusted because now I was only going after the paranormal for the money. And that, I, of course, I want to be as big as Joe Rogan. And, of course, I'm going to compare myself to him. And now I'm not to be trusted because it's all about the money to me. And it pissed me off, if I'm being blatantly honest with you. And here's why. When a man in our society makes millions of dollars or has success like Joe Rogan. Oh, he's a bro. Yes, you did it. Awesome. Good job, dude. Tell me how you can do it. When a woman does it, she's a whore. Who'd she sleep with to get there? She couldn't have possibly got there on her own. When a man is on OnlyFans, oh, dude, that's right, you rack up those that money from those bitches. And when a girl does it, she's a slut, right? She's not marriage material. Even though technically, I think it's hilarious, women are very empowered on OnlyFans because they are taking advantage of the patriarchy. They are taking advantage of the gluttonous prospects that males cannot help but give into, which is female bodies and sex, right? So I, if you ask me, women on OnlyFans are winning because they're taking advantage of the dumb patriarchy that we have in our society, right? But they're still not marriage material, they're, they're hoes, right? Because that's what our patriarchy has taught our society to believe because of all of the religious trauma that our society is based off of is women always walk two steps behind the man. You must respect your man, right? When a woman wants to make a bunch of money, she's a gold digger, right? She couldn't have possibly gotten where she wanted to go by herself. She had to have some strong man behind her to, to push her there, right? Who'd she sleep with to get that money? There's just like this guy that left this comment. Crystal's just after the money. She can't be trusted now. Of course, that's all she wants. Blah, 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 blah. Did you miss all my other podcasts? It has nothing. It, it, it's this double-edged sword on one side, I was saying I was quitting pod, or I was quitting paranormal for a while because I needed to go heal because my parents died. My mother was murdered. And I hope to God no one else on this planet ever experiences the pain that I experienced because I don't know if people would survive it. I was on the brink of suicide many times and I didn't do it, which shows the strength that I have. But what a cruel effed up thing to say to me when I'm going through that with my parents and trying to heal through that. And that's part of the problem I had with some close friends in my life. They said things to me that were really cruel. Like you just need to get over it. Just get over your mom. Just like, just stop talking about it and get over it. That's not how it works. That's not how healing works. People have to heal on their own time. No two people are going to heal alike. Some people may not heal and they may cross over. I was on the verge of it. You can't tell people how to heal. I had to cut a lot of friends out. I had to cut a lot of family out because I couldn't listen to that. I'm not going to be able to just get over it. I'm not. It's not how I deal with things. I process my trauma. I don't shove it under a rug. And most of the population shoves it under the rug. So I don't get along with you on a personal level if that's how you, how you do things. And then this guy telling me I'm untrustworthy because I'm just going, now I'm, I'm only going about it for money. That's the confusing part though. Because on one side, I want to say it's not about the money. It's about the healing. And on the other side, I am going to say it's about the money. How many public failures have I had that you guys have watched with Ghost Girl Diaries? I have been in endless amounts of contracts with production companies that have failed. My original YouTube channel with hundreds of thousands of followers, millions of views tanked. And it's never coming back. That is a massive burn when you put thousands of hours into editing and working on this channel and it blows up in your face. So if I've had all of these public failures that I've willingly, openly talked to you guys about, why is it wrong for me to say that I deserve success? Why is it wrong for me to say I want to be as successful as Joe Rogan or I want success or I want this next time around with Ghost Girl Diaries? It's not going to fail. I'm not going to let it fail. Why is that wrong? Because I'm a woman? Because I'm a female speaking? Because if that was a male saying, I want to be as successful as Joe Rogan, I don't think he would have gotten that backlash. But I'm a female. Who did I sleep with to get there, right? And that's what's wrong with our society. And that's the patriarchy that I fight on a daily basis with Ghost Girl Diaries. And I'm sick of it. I deserve to say I deserve success. 
you guys want to see me filming. You guys know I'm a good filmmaker. You guys know I've won countless, like six or eight, I can't even remember the count now, uh, film festivals. You know I'm good at what I do. I've been recognized good at what I do with my filmmaking. You guys want to see me go in haunted locations and film and produce for you. That takes money. So you want me to sit here and say, oh, no, I'm going to be bashful. I'm going to be I'm going to be humble and I'm going to say I don't deserve success. Bullshit. Bullshit. I have been through enough at this point and I have had enough failures that now I am saying I am manifesting my own reality. I am manifesting my future and I deserve success. And it's not necessarily about the money. It's not being a, this guy called me a sellout. Really? You want to talk about being a sellout? If I was a sellout, I would have already had the series signed. I could have had the series signed 10 years ago. Producers and production companies wanted to sign it, but I would have had to give 100% creativity control over to them. And I said, no, that's a sellout. I think I'm quite opposite of a sellout. A sellout is taking one of the opportunities from these countless executive producers and producers that asked me to sleep with them in exchange for the series. That is a sellout. And I get it. We're in a really traumatized earth planet where society is very unhealed. And when you live, when you choose to live your life publicly, like I do, you're going to get opinions from people. But I am the furthest thing from an effing sellout. I will not accept that as a derogatory statement towards me because I have done everything to not be a sellout. I deserve, on one hand, you guys want to see content from me. On the other, you tell me, oh, don't make it about the money. Well, if I don't have the money to film for you, there's going to be no content. So unfortunately, it is about the money. And I know this was only one person compared to hundreds of you that still follow me that, you know, maybe even in the thousands with my TikTok that support me. But it just... My point of this blurb was to show you the bullshit that I fight on a daily basis with paranormal. Being a female in paranormal, and it sucks. I've had other females in paranormal that are online message me asking me for advice because they get it too. And there is none. There's none. I can't give you any. There's other bigger creators than me that have been trying to get signed and get series and they're going through the same fight I am. It, good luck. That's all I have to say to you. And I honestly... It, for the last couple of years, I think I stepped aside on purpose to see if anyone else would come out on top and be able to take it over. And nobody did. And that's because I'm not the only one with this fight. Um, I'm not a sellout and I do deserve success. And if you don't like those statements, then you don't need to be here. Period. Um, I'm just reading my notes here. I guess another thing with whatever the future brings with Ghost Girl Diaries is the old version of GGD or the old versions of Ghost Girl Diaries died with the old version of Crystal. Like, I, like I don't know if you guys have ever experienced a spiritual awakening and an actual death and rebirth, the rebirth process of becoming your new self and like the metamorphosis like a butterfly is almost as painful as the death of your old self. And it is effing painful. And I needed to come back and reinvent myself and take these two years to heal to decide where am I going now? This is a new version of myself and I can't go back to what it was. I can't go what's back to what it's been. If I revamp this entire thing, it has to be a completely new version of it. And thankfully I've had Kat, um, you know, to talk about and she loves everything I'm kind of talking about, especially what I'm wanting to, to move forward with. But in order to move forward, I have to leave the past completely behind. So this is the last podcast I'm talking about the old channel and how it didn't work and blah, blah, blah. And I don't care about it anymore. It's all dead. It's dead air. So then what though, right? Like, so, so now what? A series? Hollywood? You guys know I've worked in production and you know, what's crazy is the last two years I've been doing my own social media and it's the first time I've been self-sustainable working for myself, not working for a studio. And I love it. And I've had production companies ask me to do field production work. I don't want to. 
I don't want to I don't want to work under anybody anymore. It's interesting when you get that taste of freedom and you're working for yourself entirely. You don't want to lose it. I don't, I don't I mean, it's great. Like, of course, I have contracts with companies that I do work with, but um, I'm my own boss. Why would I want to go back to anything else? I don't want to live in L.A. I don't want to. I don't like California anymore, um, which is shocking to say. I'll never move back there. As far as Nevada goes, I think I'll probably be leaving Nevada at some point. So through this new process of Ghost Girl Diaries, you guys are going to see the new version of me and adventures that you're going to come on me with. It, it got me a couple of months ago. I've been really um, blessed to have some amazing people in my life, like very high profile people. Um, people with millions of followers have come into my life over the last, it was weird. Cause like in the process of the death of my old self, I lost a lot of people and I was upset because I was like, man, that was like my, my circle was already small and now they're gone. But then as the rebirth occurred, I got some amazing people in my life. Yes. Some famous, some that are like really big YouTubers, no one in paranormal no one in goth community. It's actually people that are in the music community or public figures that came into my life. You all know who you are. And they have been, I mean, millions of followers, millions of downloads on YouTube, on Spotify. These people are amazing. They've been so good for me. And I think that for the past like year since they've been in my life, I've been absorbing them like a sponge. Like it's that, uh, that saying your vibes attract your tribe. And I started attracting these really successful people who are independent and work for themselves and follow their dreams with no, they're resilient. Like they don't give up. And they were like, they started researching me and they're like, oh my God, like, look at what you've done. Look at what you've done. You've won film festivals. Like they've seen my work. They're like, you have to keep going with this. Why'd you stop? And I was like, oh, trauma. And they have been the driving force behind why I decided to pick the pieces back up with Ghost Girl Diaries. They have been a driving force and it's been humbling to have such successful people in my corner because I feel like for a long time, it was a lot of just discouraging people, right? Like famous people that I've been friends with in the paranormal community can be so toxic. They don't support you. They see you as competition. I think that that's a main reason why I haven't gotten signed up until this point is people know I'm a comp there. I'm, I'm a decent amount of competition and they are scared to put me in a position where I could take them out. And now flip flopping to my rebirth where I have these really successful people with millions of followers gains that I've never seen that are telling me to keep going. It's like, wow. Your vibes attract your tribe and people do. There are good people out there that want to support you. And that totally changed my perspective about manifesting your reality. And I'm so grateful. So what's my reality look like? I think I'm going to eventually be leaving Las Vegas. I know that I've been talking about this for like two years. After my mom died, I felt the urge to want to leave. Um... I feel like I need to address this again, but be a little bit more clear. I, I still have a lot of friends that I grew up with in Colorado and they're begging me to come back since I, I grew up there. I, I don't think I can. My entire family has crossed over from Colorado, or at least the family that I was close with. No one's left. And I think that if I went back to Colorado, it would just make me nothing but sad. And I love Colorado. It is home but I don't think that I have a place there anymore. I think I need some fresh energy. I used to live in California, as you guys know, and it's it's been a mess since the pandemic. I do not see myself going back there. I don't see myself going back to work as a producer. I don't. I'm thriving right now. So the next question is, so where? I really like New England. My heart is telling me to go where there's a fall. I miss the seasons. I live in Vegas. It's, it's dry. It's hot. I mean, it's new. And that's really why I moved here to begin with is like, well, I mean, I didn't, 
I, re- I was a little hesitant to move to Vegas, but I didn't have a choice if you read my book. But when I moved to Vegas, I liked it because like the buildings are new, like they don't keep anything old here, which is a little sad if you think about it because of history. But it's got to be sparkly and new for, you know, tourists to come to Vegas. And I really liked it. But after I, I've been here for 10 years, it's a dark city. Like it was a city that was, um, you know, created out of the mafia. And although I don't know if the mafia is necessarily still here, the ideologies are. And I've talked about this before. Um, there's a lot of dark ideologies in place. I think that's why my mom was killed by this nurse. I think that it's been passed down from generation to generation. Back in the day when the mafia was involved and they needed to off somebody, they would pay a doctor to do it or whatever. You know, if the person was in the hospital, like the mafia was heavily involved. And I think that those ideologies have just been passed down and passed down. The corruption, a lot of corruption. The government's very corrupt here. Um, anyone that's local and grew up here, um, they don't. They keep the education system really bad unless you go to private school because they don't want you to leave. They don't put any tax dollars into the education system here in the public school. They want you to stay dumb and stay here so that you work at the casinos for the rest of your life. Once again, mafia ideologies. And I don't like it here. It's time. I need... It feels dark after my mom's death. And um, I also am a really big lover of astrology and astrocartography. If you ever look up your astrocartography chart, um, some places you should move to would be like your sun sign or your Midhaven sign, North Node, or even Venus would be really good for creativity. And it's funny because Venus, my Venus line, astrocartography, is, it basically takes your birth chart and it maps it out on a map of where you would thrive the most in the world. My Venus sign lies in Denver, which is where I was born and raised, but I don't think I'm going to go back there. But my sun and north node are conjunct, and they run right through Salem, which is hilarious. I'm wearing a, this was not planned, by the way, but um, I'm wearing a Salem shirt, if you can't see. Um, I don't want to live in Salem. I've, I've, I've done a lot of research for a couple of years in areas that I like. I like, I, I don't think I want to be in a big city. I'm not manifesting a big city. I grew up in a city outside on the outskirts of Denver with about 200,000 people, give or take. So I think I want to go to a city that's about that size again. Um, There's like 8 or 10 million people that live in Vegas right now. So Vegas is a massive city. I think that I need the next phase of my life needs to be peace and quiet and slow down a little bit. I I really miss bonding with nature. We don't really have a lot of nature here. Most houses don't have grass or trees because of the water restrictions. I miss lakes and rivers and just being connected to nature and the nature spirit. So I'm thinking Eastern PA still. Uh, I don't, I want to be two to four hours from a big city. So I'd like to be furthest two to four hours from like New York. Although I do like parts of Vermont, Southern Vermont. Cat is in New Hampshire. A lot of people have asked me if I'll move to New Hampshire. No, I don't. That's Cat's thing and her family's there. And I think I need my own. I need my own adventure. I'm not a Manhattan girl or a Long Island girl by any means. I'm looking at suburbs and I'm also looking at Victorian homes or Tudor homes is my is what I'm looking at. Um, so that's going to be an adventure you guys are probably going to go on go on with me. Another main major reason for me to move to New England is because Cat is there. Anywhere I move will be between two to four, two to six hours from each other, and we can paranormal and ghost hunt with each other constantly. Um, so that's another reason that I want to move. I miss fall. I miss winter. My mom always made holidays very special. I'd like to meet someone. I've been single for a long time. I'd like to meet someone and fall in love again and maybe start a family with somebody or maybe this person has kids from a previous relationship either way. But I, I need to like, I need to ground myself. It's time. I need to root myself in somehow, somewhere. 
Don't ask me if I'm on dating apps. The answer is no. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not seeking to that to that point. Um, when this move happens, it's going to have to be universally guided. So my guides will tell me when it's time. They will show me the path when it's ready. They know what's best for me. So I'm going to allow my spirit team to step in and do this. Um... I'm, I'm in love with New England. I love the fall. Fall is my favorite season, so I need to be somewhere with the best falls. Um, I'm at a point where I needed to miss Ghost Girl Diaries in order to come back. And that's where I'm at right now. I missed Ghost Girl Diaries and I needed to come back. I didn't know if I was going to. I talked about quitting and I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I thought I was going to. Um... The internet, as a producer and working for, for all these years in film and TV, I have been trained in the worst way possible to, to think being a YouTuber is a bad thing. If you work in the professional film industry, you are shamed if you're a YouTuber. And at first I didn't believe that, right? Like at first I didn't believe it because I'm looking at all these creators even like I'm not a huge fan of Sam and Colby but I do admire what they do and the fan base they've created and but you're looking at all these YouTubers or even Bailey Sarian I love her you know you're like why why are they being shamed like they're they've created their own online world why are they being shamed for it I don't know in the in the professional film world if you want to be a filmmaker you better have never touched YouTube in a major way or you won't be considered someone who's taken serious and I think that was another reason why I was so hesitant to ever post something major or big or really do like investigations online because I feel like that was up that sealed the deal. I'll never make it in Hollywood. And I had to sort of undo that ideology. Because if I don't like the patriarchy, I don't like the men that are running the producers and the production companies and the networks. And I don't want them in control of me then eliminate the patriarchy. Use YouTube as your asset to create a fan base, create a community of people that are like-minded, that love and understand the same things you do. And it's terrible that Hollywood had drilled that into my brain that it was such a bad idea. And I think that was another reason why I backed away from it for so long and I didn't want to restart. So I had the last two years, that's another thing that I've been undoing is the power and control over my mind that I've heard from all of these producers. Um, my goal would be to film at haunted locations and make it an online miniseries. Travel with Kat, maybe it's just the two of us. Maybe Josh is our, he does our security, so he'll probably go with us too. He's also on the East Coast, so that would make it a lot more easy for us and go film and hang out and have fun. And I think I realized over the past two years, I've been making really good money working for myself. Why can't I keep going, make more money and be able to fund these trips with Kat and Josh? So I didn't realize I had that financial freedom until I jumped off the cliff and did it for the past two years. But I think that this was all divinely guided because if I wouldn't have done that on my own social media for a couple of years, I wouldn't be here now believing that I could do it for GGD as well. There's other ways to support us too. Kat and I started a Patreon page. You can subscribe to our, um, you can subscribe to our podcast for $5 a month. Um, I, I'm going to have the link in my bio at crystalleandra.com or ghostgirldiaries.com. You can also subscribe to my Instagram for $5 a month. Any, I mean, I don't expect you to do all of them, but any of them will contribute to helping us get where we need to get going. TikTok is something I'm going to push. So let's talk about social media for Ghost Girl Diaries. I think another thing is I've been overwhelming myself and I've been going back and forth. Do I start a second YouTube channel? Because my KL one is pretty much thriving. Like it's good to go. It's monetizable. It's fine. 
So do I upload GGD content to KL or do I restart another, you know, Ghost Girl Diaries YouTube? And I don't think I can. I, I think that's too much. And I I do look at people like Joe Rogan and Bailey Sarion. Joe Rogan has, you know, the experience and Bailey Sarion has hers, which is murder, makeup, murder, mystery Mondays or whatever it's called. She doesn't have a separate YouTube for that. I've got to compact everything and keep it together. So from now on, everything's going to be uploaded to my personal YouTube page. TikTok will be separate. So I will have a Ghost Girl Diaries TikTok and my personal TikTok. The, that will be separate because you never know who's going to see you on, on social media. And also, you shouldn't be mixing niches like that. And as far as the Ghost Girl Diaries Instagram and Facebook page and, t and Twitter, they're still there. But I don't, Twitter is probably going to go dead. I'm just going to keep it as like a placeholder. And I don't know what to do about Instagram yet. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be uploading paranormal content to Instagram or if I'm going to also upload it to my personal. Once again, I think that it would be smarter to keep it simple and not overwhelm myself so that I want to like give up if I'm rebuilding here. This kind of goes into the next part of like, what are we going to, you know, and with online, think about this. Like I was, I got on the John Bonet documentary because they found my creeps and cosmetics. So I'm going to keep going with creeps and cosmetics. I was doing makeup, like goth makeup. And that's how motionless and white found me to be on in the music video. I also just went to the motionless and white concert and Chris saw me. That was really cool. And another thing that just happened recently that I can finally announce today is I actually just collaborated with Elvira, the one and only the queen of the darkness. I collaborated with her and, and we're having um, a little collab that's coming out. I got to talk to her privately on a Zoom call. Now, if you know anything about me, my my mom did a podcast with me and there was a I loved Dolly Parton when I was a kid and I loved Elvira. And I feel like I came, became a splitting image of both, but Elvira, I was obsessed with at like the age of three and I loved Dolly Parton too. And for me to collab with Elvira was unbelievable. And I don't know. I, I, I got like, to me, that's one of those goals that like, how, where do you go from here? That's like one of the biggest things I've done. Like she is one of my biggest idols since I was a child. I told her that. And if you collab with your biggest idol, then where do you go? Right. And I had to think about that too. It was like, am I content with just doing makeup and hair for the rest of my life and fashion? I love it. But is that all I'm defined as? And I was like, no, I'm not. I miss paranormal. And I think it was going to take that collab with Elvira for me to be like, okay, it's time. You were meant to do Ghost Girl Diaries and it's it's time to get back with it. And talking with her and even having some encouragement from her um, brought me back to life. And it's weird because over the last couple of years, although I've been through so much trauma and I'm trying to heal from it, I've done some amazing things. I've had some amazing opportunities and I think that's just more push from, from my, my spirit guides and my spirit team to just keep going, you know, but me doing these uploads, talking about spiritualism and the other side and contacting my guides and, um, you know, having this direct link to source essentially after my mom was murdered, my viewpoints on spiritualism and paranormal changed too. And I couldn't figure out how I was going to reincorporate that in paranormal. And I still don't know. I think it's going to have to come naturally when I go into a haunted location and film. But I'm not who I used to be. I'm not, I don't have the same beliefs that I used to be. I, I was a young producer, you know? I got on, on set with Paranormal Challenge at 25. I was immediately recruited in Hollywood. I was making a ridiculous amount of money. I was flying around the world for free. I was living in expensive lofts in Los Angeles. And that will give you a big ego, right? And I'd been to all these haunted locations and they were amazing. And um, 
you know, being a producer, I'm big wig. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm important. So I thought. And the more experience I had with paranormal and in that field, which is like professional film, my ego got really big. And I was like, I know everything. I think I know everything. And you don't. And it takes that wake up call. And for me, I mean, I, I've been doing shadow work for a while. So I started disassembling my ego years ago, but it really happened like hardcore when my mom was killed. And I started having this contact with the other side. There's something called the Dunning Kruger effect. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this, but basically it means that um, if you, if you're fascinated by a subject, let's say you're like an Egyptologist, the more information you start learning about that subject, the more knowledge you gain, the less confident you feel to be able to talk about it because you realize it's this vast amount of energy and knowledge, right? It's this vast amount. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know everything because I don't. But then there's the opposite when it's the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is when you're just skimming the surface of a topic. And for me, it was working as a producer in film. And you think that your, your ego is really big and you think you know everything and I've traveled the world and I know this and I know that. And you speak with confidence, but really, you don't really know what's going on. And that was me. I mean, I think that's all of us. I mean, all humans have egos. But after this you know, massive spiritual awakening I had with my mom being killed and I'm communicating with my guides almost on a nightly basis and I'm learning information from them and I'm interacting more with the other side. All of a sudden, the more I'm realizing I didn't know shit. I was not knowledgeable like I thought I was. And I was like, whoa, that's like a big kick in the pants for my ego. So how do I tie that back into paranormal? I don't know. I don't know. Claircognizance. I, I have clairsentience. I've always had clairsentience, which is where you can walk in a room that's haunted and you can smell, see, hear certain things. Um, particular mine was scent. So if some, if a woman died in that room, I could smell her perfume. Like, um, I used to be able to look at a picture of a haunted location and I could tell you what the location smelled like. Um, I could smell it physically. I could, I thought I could physically smell it. Um, and now with this spiritual awakening, my abilities have grown even more. I hear things constantly. Like it's weird. I was in, um, It's like strange things will happen. Like the other day I was walking by this man. It was like outside of Walmart. There's like a PetSmart over there too. And I was kind of in between Walmart and PetSmart. And this guy walked by me and I could hear his thoughts and they were pedophile thoughts and it creeped me out and it scared me. And I had a dream that night where I asked my guides, like they, they came to me and they were like, you can hear certain thoughts with people now but you need to like keep your protection up and not feel fear. And I was like, I don't like that. Like, I don't want to hear those kind of, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to know what's going on in people's minds. It's not everyone, but it's certain people. I also have this ability where I'll be in line at a checkout, like Walmart or whatever. And I'm behind what? people and I start hearing their thoughts. Like I need to go pick up pizza or something, you know, whatever random thought. And all of a sudden the two people that are together at the checkout start talking about how, Oh, I need to go pick up pizza. Very, very strange that I, I, I have this, these new abilities coming through and I haven't really honed in on them yet. I don't know what's going to happen when I'm at a haunted location. I can also hear things like clear audience. I thought that I had like a ghost in my house for the past like week and I even saged and smudged the house. I tried Palo Santo and it wouldn't go away and it was bells. And I realized it was my guides that were sort of, um, I don't want to say tricking me. That's not the right word. Testing me. They were testing me to see if I heard certain things. And I talked about this online in a short video I did on TikTok, And I had this woman come after me and she was like, you're not protecting yourself enough. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. You need to do this. You need to do that. And this goes back to the Dunning-Kruger effect, right? 
just because she does witchcraft and does things a certain way to protect herself doesn't mean I have to. Doesn't mean I need to do it that way. What works for me in protection may not work for you, vice versa, right? And that's what I'm realizing with the paranormal and how gate kept it can be sometimes is not, I'm not right all the time. Like I might say I experienced something and you're going to experience it a completely different way in your own reality. But that doesn't mean that you're wrong and I'm right or that I'm right and you're wrong. And so I just, right, like the expansion I've had with, with the paranormal. And now I'm going to be bringing that into when I'm filming these things for you guys. I don't like the gatekeeping stuff. That's why I, I never fit in with the witchcraft community. I don't really practice. I mean, I do like manifestations and I'll do like some candle spells here and there. But I don't like the witch, witch community because they can be very gatekeepy. Like, you should do this. You should do that. No, do this. Do that. And I just can't stand that. You should just do whatever makes you happy. You know what I mean? And I hate when they, like, they put you down by calling you like a baby witch. Or, I mean, I get that with being a baby goth. But um, getting back on track is just... I don't know how these abilities are going to now affect me being in the paranormal. I didn't really have all of these abilities before my mom died. So this all happened after she died and after I went through the sort of death and rebirth process. So the main things I'm going to be working on are this. There's going to be a weekly podcast, Cats Coming Back, Creeps and Cosmetics. Um, I want to still incorporate my, my spookiness. Uh, it's going to be mainly paranormal related. Short fashion video once a week on YouTube. Um, a short like tutorial or review on YouTube. And I want to include a long version paranormal video once a week. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. I've kind of been like taking pieces of other people that I like. Like I, I love Becky Galantine. You guys probably follow her. I've spoken with her a few times. Lovely person. Um, but she mainly does like graveyard history, like grave history, which is cool, but not for me. Then there's the guy that does the paranormal files. He's got millions of followers. The only thing is he really has been divulging lately into like conspiracy theories and, um, What's the other, like murder mysteries? I don't, I'm, that's not for me. I love Bailey Sarian, but she does murder mysteries and that's also not for me. I have to have something that's related to paranormal, whether that's Chupacabra or, you know, Jack the Ripper. I know that's murder mystery, but still like the paranormal side of it always has to go back to relating to like the ghosts or the spirits or black eyed children or aliens. I want to keep my content paranormal. Because I feel like there's other creators that have kind of strayed away in different ways from it. And I just, I don't, I don't like the graveyard thing. It's not for me. But I admire, you know, the fan base that they built on all these different levels. But I, even Sam and Colby, they do other things besides paranormal. I don't want to do that. I'm going to keep mine with my fashion content, my makeup content, and then I want my spooky bitch content. So that's what my plan is with this. My long-term goal is to not only move to New England, but to be able to film at locations with Kat. The problem is, is that financially we have to get there and it's not there right now. I'm not ready to financially move and I'm not ready to financially, you know, film with her, which is why I'm asking if anyone can support us in any way, please, please do, because that will help us get going faster where we need to be. Um, change is like a metamorphosis. And that's what's happening with Ghost Girl Diaries. And I, I get really emotional when I get messages from the OGs who are like, I've been ride or die with you since the beginning. And I, I know there's only maybe a couple hundred of you after all the things that I've been through and built and, and have come down. The many towers of Crystal's life, the many tower moments. But the, the OGs that have been here and you guys keep sticking by my side from through all of these new versions of myself it makes me emotional you guys are my soul tribe and um so many of you have been messaging me over the past year when are you doing it when are you? and i guys it was going to take me missing it it was going to take and this new version of myself. I've never approached Ghost Girl Diaries like this. My ultimate goal was always to get it signed, right, by Hollywood. And then it turned into a different fight. That's not my goal anymore. 
my goal right now is to create and cultivate a audience and a community that appreciates the content I'm putting out there. And then Kat and I are going to go film for YouTube. It's not, I don't want to make it about the patriarchy. I don't want to make it about my past. I don't want to make it about my faults, my failures. I want to make it about the future and where I'm going. And I want to get back on track with my love for paranormal. It's not about anything else. It's about going to haunted locations and interacting with the other side. And it's going to be epic because I'm back on track and focused on my purpose and why I incarnated and why I'm here. And it's to bring you guys on that journey with me. And I feel good. I feel like I'm more focused than I've ever been before. And sometimes it takes those towers coming down in your life in order to reroute you. Sometimes it's, sometimes you need everything to go wrong in your life so that it gives you a jumping off board in the right direction of where you want to go. So whether that's like family or friends problems or a bad job, you know what you don't want. I've already experienced that. Now I know clearly the vision of where I'm going. So I want you guys to apply that in your life and understand that that's a theme of learning and growing for the better. Stop looking at situations like it's happening to you and it's happening for you instead. If something is not working out and it's not going in your favor, it's not to hurt you or harm you. It's to show you the direction you're supposed to be going in. If there's something you don't like and it no longer serves you, that's because you're supposed to be going in the opposite direction. If that job, those people, the family are no longer serving you, then now you know which direction you need to take. What, what, where is the reality that you want to go in? My metamorphosis is complete. And thank you for being patient, patient for waiting for me to complete that metamorphosis because that death and rebirth was rough, right? Like that was rough. I had to really find some strength in my solar plexus to pull out of that. And I did. So I guess the last thing I have to say is welcome to the new journey of Ghost Girl Diaries. This goal that I have in mind it's about you guys. It's about a community. It's about cultivating a safe place for paranormal. It's about good, enjoyable paranormal content. It's about ghosts. It's about interacting with the other side. And it's also about learning that paranormal is spiritualism. Contacting the other side is spiritualism, right? It is a belief. And understanding that not everyone's going to communicate with the other side the same way. Because we all have different vibrations. We all have different frequencies. Remember I talked about that beacon that runs through each of us that's just blaring outside the top of your head? The way that I get to interact with the other side, you guys won't. Especially this new version of myself. So this will be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how it unfolds. No more negativity. No more fighting. Now, I, I do, I know a lot of people have asked, am I still going to give my opinion on some series? Once in a while, like the next in the next chat that Kat and I have, we have a couple of things that we want to talk about and say. Mainly because we believe in equality. But I can't let those discussions and topics overtake me so much to the point where it... Where I'm wearing rose-colored glasses and I'm not seeing what my, my focal point is. I can't get overly involved and overly passionate about things. So please make sure you're supporting us on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed to my KL channel. Make sure you're leaving us comments, liking, all that stuff will help boost us in the algorithm. Make sure that you're liking and following both the TikTok accounts, my personal and Ghost Girl Diaries. And Kat's really excited too. She's really excited for this next chapter. She feels very empowered. I also feel a very big sense of relief to leave Vegas. I don't know when that's going to happen. That's in divine timing. But... I don't know. Future looks good. 
Let's close the chapter of the old and the past and move on to the new. Please make sure you like and subscribe on our channel and on our podcast. This will be downloaded as a podcast for all of you to access on Apple, Spotify, and all of the major streaming resources. If you ever need to find one of our links, you can find it at ghostgirldiaries.com or really it needs to be at crystalleander.com. I will always keep the links up to date at crystalleander.com. And uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for tuning in, guys. I love you, and we'll catch you on the next one. Welcome to Ghost Girl Diaries 3.0. No, let's just call it Ghost Girl Diaries. Goat Girl Diaries. Love you guys. Bye.